Greetings fam. So um, today's video I entitled it Mini Me and Me and as we get into the video you'll understand why I entitled this as such. Um, I didn't know Vern Troyer. Never met him. Never got the opportunity. But I understood from a lot of reliable sources that he was a good guy. He was, he was friendly. He was cool with everybody. And he was not on that celebrity thing like a lot of um, so-called celebrities are. He was just laid back and he was enjoying his life. But there was a lot of deepness that was behind that smile and that gentle, gentle demeanor. And um, so I want to I wanna talk about that because it's, it's almost ironic that his character was called Mini Me because if you put it in the context of the words, it's actually describing a person of, of tiny stature. And, you know, it's not a secret that, um, that Vern was a tiny man. He was two feet eight inches. Um, he was an actor, a stunt performer, and a comedian. But he was best known for playing Mini-Me in the Austin Powers franchise. And uh, his height was the result of cartilage hair hypoplasia, which is a, a disease that causes one's growth to be stunted. And this made him, as a result, one of the shortest men in the world. Now, what a lot of people may not know is that Vern uh, Troyer was born in Sturgis, Michigan, and he um, he was never treated by his parents any differently from his average size siblings. He said that he used to carry wood, he fed the cows he, and the pigs and the farm a animals, and um, he was initially raised in the Amish religion, uh, i.e. cult, but his parents left that when he was still a child. But he still, um, during his childhood, uh, Vern spent a lot of time visiting his Amish relatives. Now, his film career began when the former president of a group called Little People of America contacted him looking for someone of his size to serve as a stunt double for the infant character in Baby Blink. And this was in the John Hughes film called Baby's Day Out. He then got further work as a stunt double with some minor comedic roles in films of the 90s, including Dunstan Checks In, Jingle All the Way, Men in Black, and My Giant. He first met with uh, Jay Roach to discuss portraying Mini-Me, um, which was directed by Roach, and it was co-created by Mike Myers. And before filming of the series' uh, second film began, Mike Myers was so impressed with Troyer's performance that he, re he rewrote the script for Austin Powers' The Spy Who Shagged Me in order to give Mini-Me more screen time and to remove the character's death. He was supposed to be killed off in the first uh, time he appeared in film. And then uh, three years later, he won another part in the Austin Powers in Goldmember 2002. He was then recast as Mini-Me again. And um, he then also collaborated with Myers on The Love Guru. Um, after reaching a large audience as Mini Me, he then became uh, portrayed as a goblin uh, named Grip Hook in the Harry Potter. Harry, <laughs> funny, Harry Potter. That's what it is to me. But anyway, Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone. And then he played the role of Percy in the fantasy the Imaginarium of Dr. Parnassus. And that's interesting because we also have the late Heath Ledger who starred in that film, uh, which was a really creepy film, by the way. I saw it. Um, then uh, Vern also made several appearances as himself in reality TV and The Surreal Life, Welcome to Sweden, and um, the... Uh, British celebrity Big Brother. He also did something in Wife Swap. So he, he's had a long, what many would think would be a successful career. 
But that doesn't hide the fact that the man suffered from depression. He also suffered from alcohol, alcoholism. And he spent time in rehab. In fact, what I understood was that um, the day before he died, he was actually admitted to the hospital and he was scheduled to go into rehab. So what happened? And why, why Mini Me and Me? Well, I'm going to tell you, um, the best way I could tell you is there was um, a reggae song that um, to this day I still enjoy listening to it. It's called Good Vibes. And it was sung by a brother named Anthony G. And what it, one particular line in it that I think sums up not just Vern Troyer, a.k.a. Mini Me, but a lot of us, is that we want to feel like, we want to look like lions. No, excuse me. We want to look like giants, but we feel like dwarfs. So many people out there want to appear as great as they think they are, but inside they feel very small. And I too, I too have, have had this feeling. Some of you may recall the video where I talked about how the waiter uh, came over to a table full of people but I was the only black one at the table and he decided in his infinite wisdom to show me which fork to use. And so many people said, oh, I was being racist that they would have been glad that he showed them, but he didn't. He didn't think that the other people at the table needed to be showed what fork to be used. And that made me feel very small. And here I am at this fancy thousand dollar plate dinner, although I didn't pay for my plate, but he didn't know that. So that was an instance. Even today, as I was in a cab and we were going through a block that the trees were being cut down, and there was a sign posted before you entered the block that said, um, warning, uh, tree uh, wood cutting is going on, or something to that effect, letting you know that there was trees being cut down. But it didn't say, do not enter. So the cab driver went in because this was the route he was going to take me home. And here comes this guy out of nowhere who's not even in a car. And he's yelling at the cab driver. Oh, now you're going to sit there for half an hour. Didn't you see the sign that said do not enter? And the cab driver, he was an African brother. So his, he had a very thick accent. And he was saying, he says, no, the sign said wood cutting. And then the guy trying to be smart says, oh, the sign said welcome. So I rolled down the back window and I looked at him and I said, you know what? No, the sign said wood cutting, but it did not say do not enter. And sure enough, when the light changed, the uh, workers who were cutting down the tree moved their vehicle to the side so that the people could pass. So we were there like less than two minutes. But this guy, I guess in whatever else was going on in his life, he felt like a dwarf. So this gave him an opportunity to make himself a giant by coming and yelling at the cab driver. And both the cab driver and myself, we both said, how could this person just, you know, do that without even a clue of what's going on? And then worse than that, he's not even driving. So what does he care if we're here a half hour? What does this have to do with him? And that brings me back to the point of Vernon. He, he um... There were so many celebrities who went on a social media to offer condolences because, as you can see by the clips, he was pretty much friends with everyone. He was even married once, and this was actually, I, you know, everyone deserves love. But people, we have to choose wisely because just because you love someone does not mean they love you. And he married this woman. She was six foot two, first of all. So I don't know what he might have thought he could have done with that, but uh, she was a model. She, uh, well, she was a, a Playboy model. Let's clear that up. So that she was one of um, Hefner's, um, uh, uh, Hefner was a pimp. And all of those women who were Playboy, quote, models, 
were in his stable. So I don't know why he got married to her, but I can tell you without question why she got married to him. And the next day, he asked for an annulment. Of course. So, um, you know, even though their engagement was reported, Vern and his attorney said that, you know, there were no formal wedding plans and that this woman, Genevieve Galen, had fabricated the story on her own for her own financial gain. Then there was this other um, Instabird named Renee Schreider who made a video of her and Vernon having sex and then she um, leaked it to the public via TMZ. You know, real classy TMZ. But at any rate, um, they tried to sell the video and thankfully nobody wants to see that. So, you know, it, it, it just was an ongoing stream of different incidents that occurred in his life that I'm sure brought him a lot of pain. And I am so sorry every time I hear of someone who decides to take their own life because they can't take the life here on earth that the Lord has given them. This man, he was born with a disability. He turned it into lemonade. He took lemons that life gave him and he made them sweet and he built a career for himself. Had he just hang, hung in and trusted in the Lord, I am certain that he would have found that woman that was meant for him. Instead of reaching uh, for these unattainable women, these gold digging whores who, um, yes, I said whores, who are, are strictly after these men for their money. They don't love you. And, and this is what happens also to women. There are a lot of women of my age and, and even younger who fall for the game that these men throw down in the hopes that someone will love them and it turns out badly because the person never loved you. They were in love with your money. So I had to do this little thing for Vern to, um, to acknowledge him and his, his work and his life, his brief life. He was not old, he was only 49, but he left this earth very sad. And people, whatever is troubling you, the answer is not um, in that bottle, for sure. And it's definitely not in ending your life because only while you have life do you have the opportunity to get to know and trust and to believe and cast all your cares on Christ Jesus. Once you take your life, which to me there is no greater or lesser sin, but once you end your life there is no turning back. It's over. You have given up every opportunity you would have had to come and know the Lord and to trust in him to guide you and lead you along the way. So it's not an answer, but it is a final solution and one that you don't want to make. I don't know what happens in the hereafter, but I would guess and I would be willing to guarantee that if you end your life, you will not sit on the right hand of Christ in the end times because you have not trusted him. You allowed the enemy to drag you. There used to be a movie called Drag Me to Hell. Well, that's what you do when you end your life. You, you, you don't have to be dragged. You're already, you, you got a first, uh, first class ticket. But Vern, I'm going to pray for your soul because you brought joy to so many people. And it's, it's with sadness that I do this video. And to all of you out there who want to be giants but you feel like dwarfs, trust and believe that in 
His time, in God's time, you will be exalted. But it is in His time, family. It's not in your time. And I actually, I want to quote you the verse that, that speaks to that because so many of you um, who watch and listen to what I say, you also enjoy um, the verses. James 4.10 says clearly, Humble yourselves before the Lord, and He will lift you up. So in saying that, fam, I'm, I'm going to end this with prayer like I always do. Lord, I pray for the soul of not only Vern Troya, but also everyone who even has the idea, the inkling that ending their life is a solution. Lord, I ask you to come over them Cover them with the blood right now in the name of Jesus and give them the insight that they need to carry on, to press on. Lord, I don't want to go until you call me. There is nothing on this earth that makes me want to leave it because I know through you, all things are possible. I know, I know that no weapon formed against me shall prosper. I know that no love of another human being or the lack of love of another human being is going to cause me to get into a depression. Lord, help those who are suffering with depression. Help them to know that this is a device of the enemy. He wants you to think that you need that thing in your life, that you need that person in your life. You don't need it. All you need is Christ Jesus. So I asked in the name of the mighty and the holy and the sacred one, Christ Jesus, cover us, Lord, and help us to persevere through all these dark times that are coming upon us. Help us to know you and to love you and to trust you. In the mighty name of Jesus, amen.